pretty sharp hatch you got on there, buddy. Like, who, who, Thanks, did that logo, who did your ranch logo? Um, uh, 99 Designs. This podcast brought to you by mm-hmm. Not 99 Designs. I tell you, so it's interesting. We've been, I've been looking at this. I'm glad you brought that up. Oh, no, Design Pickle. I'm sorry, Design Pickle. Oh, okay. So Design sorry. Pickle is the service. Actually, you and I both use it. Uh, um, yeah. yeah, we use I it I got too. that from you. We may have a code that we actually use for Bulletproof. We'll have to, we'll have to put that in the show notes. Later, yeah, we do, yeah. Yeah, no, we do have um, a, a code for, for But it's a, like the unlimited graphics and things like that. So it's fun to be able to use it. Trey, you use it as well? Yeah, we use Design Pickle. I've used 99 yeah. Designs. I've always been pretty happy with it. 99 Designs is cool. And, you know, I've, I've recommended that to some of our masterminders from a marketing standpoint. Actually, I used it here recently for um, – what were we struggling with? Oh, a billboard option. So I'm doing a billboard above my new option. That's cool, Craig. Above my new office. And Trey, I was really having creative block. Um, and so and so was Lacey, who was helping. And so I was like, look, let's just put it on 99 designs. And then you get the, you know, you get 30 people kind of creatively ideating about what it should be, right? You give them a description and then the idea. And so <clears> and then that can sometimes form as a primer. Do you say, I like that, but do this. And Craig, I loop Craig in and all that stuff. So Without 99 designs, which was pretty cheap, I think for that whole contest, it was $159 or something like that. Something pretty cheap. I like what you chose, though. I I do too. No, of course. I mean, yeah. I mean, I think I think we chose a winner. But Craig, I don't. What was cool, Trey, is is he had two billboards side by side in Atlanta, um, and he had both of them came uh, at the same time, and they were right in front of his new location. So he actually created a design that they work together. Look, it reads as oh, one nice. gigantic, so it's two, yeah, like it's two big boards together. Wide, and then yeah. so I just made the Very graphic. Cool. So it's two looking side by side, but your eye goes, they and so I won't keep this, cool. you know, I'm not a big fan of like analog media, like billboards and, and, you know, Oh no, but like that's like direction. That. That's like, that's not analog yeah. media. Yeah. That's a call to action. Like we're here yeah, straight <laughs> down, yeah, straight it, down. It does have that. Look down. Here we are. Yeah, here we are. That's important. And in a relocation strategy, it was important. So I, I, you know, I pulled trigger in a year. It was actually more, more cost effective than I thought for those two. I was expecting. It was super cheap. What do you think would be a double billboard in Atlanta per month? What would you think, Trey? Depends, Trey. I mean, it depends on location, but let's go ahead. Let's let's assume it's a good location there. What, 10 grand a month per billboard? That's what I said. Yeah. No, no, no. I said, I said five per billboard per month. I thought 10 grand per both. Yeah. Much, much cheaper. I, I'm getting both Less. of them for, well, because I did it on a year. I did it. I think they're around. Maybe you 20. don't want to say it. Maybe you don't want to say it because <laughs> someone will be like, I'm just trying to protect my boy here. We're jacking up the price yeah. on ourselves. Right? Yeah. Someone just like, I'll buy his year out. Yeah. He said he'd yeah. pay 10 grand a month. Yeah. I'll right. just go right over him. It, interestingly. Right. Don't, don't do it. Don't do right. it. All right. Well, this actually it was cheap. Us, it was less. This, this brings us to uh, a discussion I actually wanted was on our agenda that I actually wanted to do. I wanted to talk about. This is a nice segue about marketing. And were you guys on the Mighty Network when I posted their question or had Lacey post a question on my behalf, basically about um, about marketing, right? And so I I had seen this. What's the question? Sorry. So it was about it was related to the the this the stand the small business association recommends that businesses spend X amount on their P and L. Okay. Oh yeah. 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 So yeah, percent it? spend. Yeah. Can yeah. one of y'all, as I'm cause I got other graphics Can one of y'all go into that question. If you can find it in there. <laughs> yeah. And, and, right and so I think the recommended, cause I don't want to misquote the, the I don't want to misquote the quote. I think the recommended was, so I, I put the quote on there and I said, who here recommend, who here, uh, agrees with this or disagrees. And so I think the recommended amount that the SBA recommended was seven to 8% of gross. And I, you know, me personally, I thought that was a little aggressive, a little high. Trey, you for shit sure think it's oh, high. Oh, shit, yeah. <laughs> if you've listened to me talk at all, you know that's, I think that's ridiculous. So I, and so I, I posted it, here. it, and I was expecting okay, so, an overwhelming – okay, go, Craig. Yeah, US, the, U, uh, the U.S. SBA recommends small businesses, businesses with revenue less than $5 million, allocate between 7 to 8% to marketing. Agree? Yeah, and that's so why I posted that. And so I was expecting yeah. Trey an overwhelming proportion of people being like, "Hell no, that's way too much," and write seven to eight percent line on it. And it and it ended up mm-hmm. being about a 50-50 split. Half the people saying, "Yeah, I agree with that," and half the people saying, "Like, no, 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 too much." And so it kind of I was kind of blown away by that. Like I said, I was expecting a disproportionate answer. And so I've dug into this a little bit more just to find out like where are people not so much the spend, but like where are people anticipating spending in twenty twenty three. Um, 
And let me share my screen here. Well, while you're sharing your screen, it's it's a silly question to, to ask, and it's a silly question, a silly suggestion on behalf of the US SBA. It's it's conflating so many figures into like if if you yep. do five million or less, this is what you should do. That's that's total bullshit, man. So what I was saying is, if it's a startup, it could be you know double, triple that, and if it's a mature business, it could be one or two percent. So Trey, the reason why you're such a believer in a smaller budget is because you frankly subsidize your marketing with PPO. So you don't you don't spend the money, but it's actually being counted for somewhere. Right. It has a, a lower use. It saying, has a right. cost. So yeah. you you know you're not charging you're charging a, a participating provider rate for your crown. Mm -hmm. So if we really, really want to distill that down and be be fair, you would actually have to probably back in some of that into a marketing budget and get to a, a number that's higher than your actual marketing budget really is. Sort of, yeah. but it, it's just dumb to, to say things like that. On um, you know, uh, there, yeah, I there's, a, what's there's too many variables that go in there. That's holding virtually nothing constant, or, uh, or it, let me it does that. make holding everything constant. <clears throat> but it also makes people feel like shit because, like, the US SBA says this. I'm way below or way above. It's just like metric dysphoria. You know, who the hell knows? Like you have to take in it. So, mm -hmm. And I think there's, a, so we're guilty of this in dentistry. Like this is what your practice should right, look so like. So let's do this then. Let the, so let's go there. Trey, what do you think? No, I didn't want to, I didn't want to. No, I, I know, I love, but I like where here. you're going because I think it's a different based on the context of the practice. So Trey, where do you think the marketing spend of a PP, a full PPO practice should be? Just, and don't work under, let's call it under two and a half million dollars. Well, uh, how many years is we have to add another access right, to I it? Make no, you have to. How long has it been out? I an mean, is it a startup? Practice, an established practice, not a startup. An established practice, five years. And it, you know, it's, it's, it's okay, but long. let's add another layer. No, one doctor no, booked up. up four weeks, to you. I'm four months. <laughs> a guy who wants to grow his well, business an and add another hour. doctors. <laughs> no, because we're doing so, a disservice by saying this is what you should. Because we're experts and we're saying this is what it <laughs> should. B. But so, are you adding a doctor? No, we're not. We're saying, what is your opinion? Yeah, we're going to take an opinion down and we're going to talk about it in a vacuum. And then we'll have to just understand that, yes. <laughs> okay, let's we're, have a conversation gonna, for shits and giggles. We're going to do it. Well, that, shit, <laughs> that's all we do anyway. Let's have a conversation I mean, for shits and giggles. No, I know. But let's say you're baking a dessert. Uh, how many people? That doesn't matter. I, so I'll say this. I'll say how this. And in, in my head, I would say that a, a mature practice in a pretty good location in a, let's say a metropolitan area that is, you know, under two and a half million, let's say, and let's say over, let's say over a million, you know, you have, you have momentum. You're going to spend anywhere between one and 5% depending on what you like. Okay. So obviously we all have very specific ways we market and and probably the polar opposites are going to be pete and me so i have a very specific way of what i do it and he has a very specific way of what we do it, and we have some crossover in between but i'm going to spend money on certain things that and frankly mine is probably more than that in the sense that i pay for a big sign you know that's marketing but it's a one-time deal so right. yeah that's figure that really. you know, that's a one figure that out deal. yeah but uh but you look at you look at things like that and realize that where do you want to go with it? How much content creation do you want to put in? I mean, that can be super expensive. So, I, so the, this the brings, so let, here, we won't go into that, Craig. So that I don't because I don't want you to pull. Well, I just, I just want to say one thing and then I'll let you go. It's it's we you and I know Trey's model really well, so we we have a lot of context to what he does. Trey, for, for just as a reminder for those that don't remember this, Trey has a quadrant dentistry model. It's taking the uh, an average or above average doctor and plugging him in he doesn't have to have these advanced super gps doing all on x and all that it is a different model trey let wants me, to let me let me okay let's just let's just stop this for a second because that's really not i don't really care what i really what i really want to poorly describe to too is this if we are in a recessionary time, right? If 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 everyone is expecting a potentially a dip coming, do you titrate your marketing expense very true to I'm at five percent, I stay at five percent in a bear market per se, right? So do you titrate that accordingly based on your new budget of it being a five percent of the previous month? Or do you do you allow to say, hey, we're going into more of a, a you know a recessionary time? 
and allow it to escalate plus or minus up to 7%, right? Because if it's relative to your revenues, then of course that percentage on your P&L is going to go more if you keep all marketing the same. <clears throat> so I guess that's where I'm going is, is do you, do you go, do you guys personally go dynamic or are you hard and fast with the percentage on what you allocate? Craig. Um, so for me and my ecosystem, I will, I have a, a very interesting, um, or a, di a different way when, when, when the blood is running in the streets, I ramp up. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, but I do it is a game of chicken. So in the face of declining revenue, do I have the intestinal fortitude to keep ramping up? No, I don't think I could, but for the foreseeable future, I wouldn't adjust downward. So if I had three or four months of declining revenue and the news is all about recession and blah, 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 I would, I would possibly increase my marketing knowing me, I would increase my marketing there. If it went on for 12 and 18 months, I don't think I have the balls or the cash flow to do that. Good answer. But right. that's how Trey, I feel. Trey, what would you I, say? I do nothing different. If I was to do anything different, I would be, it would be dynamic only in the sense that I am reallocating things from one thing to the next, but I don't do enough of it to, I mean, it's not real that I, that I do anyway. So I don't, and I will say this from the standpoint of a model, I don't, I don't look at this as declining revenue. We will increase. In a recessionary time, you will increase. Correct. Well, so, to what point though? I mean, like 12 months of declining, 18 months of declining. I mean, forever. Yeah. Okay. Well, you can't forever, but yes, uh, I, I like, I like your, well, you, yeah. So I can, if I continue. So you have the, the Titanic letters. approach. You're like Get basically playing the violin and the, as a Titanic's going down, you're like, oh. no need to pat hitting mimosas out. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> but yeah, you're, you're happy all the way down. No, <laughs> you, so when you, when you're dealing with, and you know, Craig, you like the, the term quadrant dentistry. I don't, I like the term bread and butter dentistry. We're doing a need. We have a needs based approach. That term. I oh, know, but I hate quadrant dentistry. We actually don't do quadrant dentistry very much. We do single tooth dentistry. Wow. And okay, can we can we just agree to call it something other than bread and butter? <laughs> you can make up the that... name and come and come to me. One, uh, one tooth dentistry. Crown one of the, one of the tooth month? dentistry. Yeah, we do we do slice of bread. It's just yeah. slice. You do one FMRs. Slice. It just takes you twenty eight <laughs> years to do it. Yeah, that's easy. This is Jones. Uh, you need to get an FMR. Let's, we'll start now. We'll end in twenty fifty. So. <laughs> When you have that type of model, the, all the stuff that we do that you make a, a full practice and model out of, we don't, that may disappear, but that's not, that's just icing on the top. So we, every year over year, we continue to rise in revenue because the needs do not change in a down market. Yeah. It's so a from a marketing model. perspective, no, it's all the same. You keep doing no, the same a, thing you do. It's a brilliant model is what I'm saying. Like if any of us just like, uh, Peter, you're going to jump all over this right now. But if if we were intellectually honest, <laughs> we would all say that the easiest thing to scale and grow is what Trey has done. It's easiest to recruit talent. It's easiest to recruit dentistry. It's most recession proof. It's the reason why there's there's not too many DSOs that are made of high multi uh, uh, super GP models. You don't see many DSOs that are made up of like what Peter and I have built at ADS and SDG. So Craig, I'm going to you throw something that. at you just because it, it's always, it's been mentioned to me a number of times. Um, this is where I don't stay quiet, but, and not to steer us too far off topic, getting into models. But the argument I would make with you is if you threw one of the docs out of my model into yours, they would boom. And if you threw one of yours into ours, they would drown. Because the level at which you have to perform in speed is is not something a super GP is comfortable with. Interesting. Go look so, at the so, level so, of, and I'll use our mastermind as an example. What at one point Pete asked the posed the question to everybody: How many hygienists can you do? And it was a unanimous across the board two, with me being the only person that says three, and and I would argue that three is the average. You're going to have guys that go beyond it. But in order to do that, you have to be phenomenal as a clinician to run through that process. So if I come in and tell you, here's your schedule, good luck. You mean a three to one ratio is what you're a saying? A three to one ratio, hygienist to doc. And, and that's just a single piece of it. But the idea becomes, 
in order to perform at that level, your clinical skills have to be on point and you have to be a, you have to be a superstar. So I have to keep docs on the bench in training to get them to the level that allows me to plug them in to that, that point to be able to, to basically to perform at that level. So the differentiator and why the only thing I think this model does become different with, if you want to up, if you want to uphold the quality and the level of, of care that you are giving is the training aspect. That's the game changer. I would, so you're saying one of your docs in Craig's environment would flourish. One of his docs in your environment would, 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 would so yeah, I, I, I disagree. So what, you what have I see so many more at bats. Here's what I would say. You have so many more at bats for your doc that they can hit a single every time. Um, right. And it, and they wouldn't have the same amount of at bats in Craig's practice because, because it's not based on just the, the crown of the month. Right. And so you have to do more of the at bat Craig's docs would have hit triples. And so your docs are right. not, would not be used to hitting a base, hit, you know, uh, a triple. you know, guys, I want to, I want to just jump in because it's not entirely correct. So we have a lot of doctors that would are just like Trey's doctors. They're seeing, you know, three columns of hygiene. They don't do FMR. They do, you know, as you would call single tooth dentistry, bread and butter dentistry. Mm -hmm. They don't do any of that stuff. They're insurance providers on three or four networks. They're hustling and they're doing 1.5, 1.6 million. They do a little bit of Invisalign because they're in my ecosystem and we, we do a lot of that. But they're not doing it all on X. They're not doing FMR. They're not doing veneers. They don't do any of that. What winds up happening is we take those docs on that are like quadrant dentistry and single tooth dentistry. And they start looking around like, oh, wow, look what that person's doing. Look what that person's doing. And they start educating themselves and they they start doing mm -hmm. more advanced dentistry. But I don't, sometimes I don't, see, I seek out just base hitter dentists. It's just in our ecosystem, they start evolving. Um, so it's a hybridized model in every manner. There's guys that are fee for service that like, no, we need a cone beam to do an FMR. And there's a lot of people like, what's an FMR? Right. So, but I, but I think yeah, your model I agree with that. Is, and I think that's brilliant. I think the the thing that I would love to have the hybridized practice is what is, the hybridized about. practice that I think is so awesome at that point is that you take that doc and you have exposure right. literally down the hall to something beyond that mm -hmm. they come in and go, oh, that's cool. I want to see that. And then they start yeah. practicing but at that level. My, my normal conversation that I'm having the practice more frequently than any other conversation is, hey, doc, don't you don't have to worry about that FMR don't, just because he or she's doing it. I don't want to do it. You know, I don't want to do that type of dentistry. Send it out. And then to the FMR doc, by the way, don't mess around with those three crowns in a row. If right. you're going to be doing an FMR, send it referral. over there. Cross it's referral. a cross referral. It's what's best for the patient. And don't feel ashamed just because you're in a, a pool of really high, um, high talented people. It's, it's fine. You know, I tell people all the time, I stopped doing FMR early on in my career. It was not sure. worth it. for but, me. So, and I would use different verbiage on that. Not, not that, you, you I don't say it like that. that. I don't yeah, say that. It's, the highly talented is all the way across the board. I would no, say, I know. That's, I know. Just, that's just preference. Yeah, I, I was dumbing it down for the sake of what I say to you, but I, I tell people, like, <laughs> admittedly, it's not worth it's not worth your time. And, Let me go back to saying. where uh, my my point of, of this stuff. <clears> of marketing. Go ahead. Kind of, well, well, yes, because it kind of started <laughs> that way, and I, I think I gave Yeah, we, we took a little U-turn. The Mighty Network. And then, yeah, we got into like, right, it's different. And we brought in insurance and marketing spend and things like that. So I follow this guy who's who's got a pretty big marketing company, pretty big following. I think he's got one of the biggest marketing companies. His name's Neil Patel. And so he sends emails and I think he, he aggregates a lot of data. I thought this one was interesting. And I was like, this will be applicable for the pod as we talk This is about. not the dentist Neil Patel, by the way. We have one of those. No. But basically, he has access and, and surveyed tons of companies and says, what is your SEO budget doing? And this is all in the context of if we are in a down year, what is your budget? Are you going to increase, maintain, or decrease? And so overwhelmingly, the response was, we're going to increase the SEO budget, okay? So SEO is one, is one aspect. What are you going to do with your organic social media budget in 2023? And it was pretty much split down there. It's just going to going to increase, maintain or decrease. And they're all kind of tied. So I would say that that one's just a push. No one's really going to change much of anything. But the, the majority of people were doing a decrease in organic social media for their budget. Okay. Can you explain for me and the listener that does understand yeah. the, the differences between those two? What? Or SEO? 
So like SEO is going to de increase. Okay, yeah. So okay, good. But good, the good organic, question. like meaning, so content SEO, creation, Craig, like, is how? What is your domain authority? How are you ranking in organic? Thing when t someone types in Del Rey implant dentist, how do you right. show up in the one through ten? That's your organic, and that is built up by you building links and getting authoritative inbound links from people and having your site set up correctly from an SEO standpoint, meaning on page yeah. SEO, having your pages structured, right? Having enough content, all these things, right? So that's SE that's or it's called organic SEO. And, and it is something that's probably not paid attention to enough. Um, myself included, and I'll get there in a second. Um, Organic social media, right, is now is now how well are you, how much are you playing into the TikToks and the Instagrams and the postings and the reels? Oh, okay, I'm sorry, I missed, I wasn't listening to the difference. Okay, got it. Organic okay. SEO. So and organic now social organic social, yep. social media. And so most people, 42% said, I'm going to decrease probably my attention to that in 2023. The... What are you doing with your content creation budget in 2023? So content creation <clears> is <throat> the thing that I alluded to in the first thing. So content creation is how many, your article writing, your links, getting guest posting, things like that, making videos, um, articles, right? Expanding your website, things like that. That's content creation. That goes up. I can't read the red. That goes, increasing yes. so, so by, goes but that's the most 83% say they're going to increase that in this. So that was the most drastic move of everything you showed so far. Correct. Correct. And then do you plan to invest in AI tools in 2023? And then 98% said yes. And so we we had that pod, uh, you know, the last pod with Craig, you and I talked about it and kind of, anyway. That's a, that's a very fascinating percentage. 98%? 98 of that level, yeah. That's, yeah, it that's I mean, literally awesome. the title of that pod was It Changes Everything. And I truly, as I've even gone geekier since then and talk to more people who are in the know and this is their life and, and you know it's it it changes it really does change everything um Absolutely. and i think for the better but it um it really just it flips it flips a lot of industries on their head um and then let's see that was that's really the only thing that's oh and then what are you doing with your podcast budget in 2023 so 92 percent are increasing it <laughs> so that that's really it i'll take this screen off of it um but I guess it goes back to my question is, is do you remain, do you remain consistent with your marketing or do you remain dynamic in which capacity? Meaning if your revenues go down, go down, do you follow it with a, with a, let's say you set it up as a 5% of your P and L, do you follow it down as your revenue goes down potentially? And do you do the converse? Do you follow it up on the way up as well? Or do you just say we're burning the ships like Craig gave the, the answer to, right? I'm going to push in a little bit harder and allow my 5% of my revenues from a PL perspective to go to seven or eight in this time, because everybody else is going to be putting their foot off the gas, right? That's what you were saying, Craig, right? Yeah. You have blood to spend streets, a certain amount. Well, it's blood just like, eats, pick it, pick up, pick up things because even if the blood is yours, so to speak. Well, it's just that when, when you, when t times are good, you have to spend a certain amount just to rise above the other voices when the voices go down because people are pulling back budget, you're, you're, you can, you're, you can, your marketing dollars go further. So mm -hmm. that's, that's all I was saying is just right now we're just having to, I mean, pay per click and all this stuff is higher because we're, we're trying to outspend the people who are competing with us. Right. And that's, and that's my, I think that's really where I was going. And I think I had this conversation, either one of you or on this pod or, but I'm digging into, I think I became a little bit lazy <clears throat> in that I, threw a lot of money at paid ads guys a lot of money because it was the easy button for for new patients specifically and, what though paid okay. youtube Specific paid yep keep going ask me a question google, google. Paid yep. seo yep nope P ppc nope. ppc so, so, so google paid PPC, ads is not youtube paid ads is not seo craig no i'm sorry i didn't mean seo i meant ppc i'm sorry i'm out PPC is this all it stands for is pay per click so did you right. go like anywhere Google, other than Google, Google or YouTube? Pay -per -click. Google pay per click is what I meant specifically. Sorry. Google ads, yes. Google ads. Right. Were you so doing that? Inside Google ads, Craig, there are two things. There are the text ads, there's Google Map ads, and there's YouTube ads. They're all on the same platform. Right. I understand. YouTube, I, I know you, you did that. But well, I mean, I understand enough for the sake of the conversation. <laughs> I don't I'm not pretending to be the marketing guru here. 
uh, I know you paid for you uh, video promotion. Okay. Did you occupy in the maps? Number one, Atlanta, Dennis, click here, you know, on the Do maps. Do I advertise in local? Yes. 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 I didn't think you were because for a minute, like a while, like, you know, three, two, three years ago, you were all about not doing that. You're right. Right. What, what changed? Cause I haven't talked to you about this since then. Yeah. I think, I think it's important. I think people are using more uh, geo specific results, right? I think. I well, think was I it, right that you stopped this altogether? No, it, it wasn't that I stopped. It's that. Or they, you, you just, you just didn't want to compete in that ad space. I remember like a conversation around like why compete where everybody else can compete when I can just make video and compete. In so you're talking sky. about, I wasn't competing with Google ads, just the ads, right? So you're, you're, you're confusing our audience here. And then you ask, well, if I'm confused, I, you know, if, mention what the audience is feeling. So Pete, you're talking about Google, YouTube. What do you do anything other than Google or YouTube? Facebook, Instagram. Okay. So you do social media paid ads as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So my, and you were careless my, with it. I wasn't careless. I was just lazy because we have so much content, so much video, so much things. It was as easy to step and deploy. The problem with paid ads is that you're competing and paying for momentary and attention and that is fine when you when when things are great right when, when you just want to, want to get a lick get a patient get the phone to ring paid ads are good i'm not saying there's not a place for it i'm saying it became almost i, I forgot all the fundamentals of the marketing the branding well not branding but i left seo absent a little bit okay so organic seo is is almost like an investment Trey, you mentioned your sign right building up your domain authority is really no different than your sign you put in effort you put in you, you put your bricks in one by one to build your sign you do the same thing for your domain authority which then creates a powerhouse right google says hey this domain is so much more powerful than the, than the one across the street so it's collateral it's it's equity in your of your business no different than your sign is and I got a little bit lazy with with that whole thing, Craig, is where I was going. That brings up a really good point. So what what made you say that? Sorry, Dwight, Dwight what what was the result you got? Just cork that for one second, Dwight. I mean, I try, sorry. What what had you not only to like cut you off, but I miss I misname you. You in the red hat. You, you. Well, that guy. what hey, why you. why did you say that though, Peter? Why did you what what realization have you had? Well, that got you to the place where you're like, okay, I, I, this mea culpa, what, what is it? It was, it was just, it was just, it needs to be, what I was reminded of Craig is that the easy button never yields longstanding results. And so what are you seeing? You're seeing it, you're seeing money I'm being seeing, spent and no, I'm seeing, not no, the same I'm level of patient. Yes. I'm saying that the spend is going up and potential right. and right now currently new patients are are trending in a different direction not drastically but they're not right. trending the way they were 12 months ago yeah the roi right? is changing the roi is Got changing okay. and so okay. so in hard times when winter is coming it's nice to rely back on free content creation right looking at stuff like where's traffic coming on because all at the end of the day it's just traffic and eyeballs and you're either you pay for it or you put in the hard work to get it free so this is where I was going with that because that that kind of furthers the whole point that I was about to make is your digital footprint should match your your actual physical footprint. Your user experience online should match the user experience when they walk in your door. Correct. And we all get the easy button happens to all of us. We all start to coast and we start to not pay attention to where the money is spent. The hard part is to create your patient experience in your in your retail space. They walk in the door. How do they experience it? How is the 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 whole experience from start to finish, including phone calls, <clears throat> marketing, all that, but there's digital real estate as well. So your Google ad, if nothing else, even if it's never clicked, you own a piece of that real estate on the digital page. So you want to own the digital stuff. You want to have a good You don't own it. it. It's just, it's very, you own it temporarily. He's saying, he's temporarily. saying you have yeah. that real so, estate. It's, yeah, it yeah. goes back to what you said, <clears throat> eyeballs. You're yes. looking at eyeballs, which you're, you're creating name recognition because although okay. they may not click on it, they Fair. saw it. Yeah. And it is and, a temporary, that specific case is a temporary one. It goes so back to even your website. So when you're looking at everyone here who's listening, when you're looking at your analytics and your ad platforms and you see the word impression, that's what Trey's referring to. Someone sees your ad, they may not have clicked on it, but it's still this psychological branding. So impressions are good, right? Because they'd cost $0 in a paid scenario. They cost you zero. You don't get, ch you don't get charged until you click on it. 
and it's still kind of some kind of this uh, branding. So Trey, I agree. I agree with that. I agree. That's, that's a, uh, it's a nice halo effect as Craig would say. Yeah. They mimic each other and you should work mm -hmm. on both, but to work on both is difficult. And therefore you start. Oh my to God, ghost. dude, I'm telling you. So like, that's what I'm saying is that I months ago, just about six months ago, I was beating my chest being like, I'm at 1.5%, you know, uh, P and L from marketing per stand, we're getting over 350 new patients a month kind of thing. Right? And it's like, look at me, I'm the marketing genius. And then shit changes a little bit. It's like, okay, wait a second. You know, and so I can't stay with the same tactic because that might, that might be trending in the wrong direction. So sometimes when shit gets hard and, and you revert back to 2008 and, you know, micro recessions we've had, so you, you have to change your strategy because doing the same thing, and expecting the same result might be insanity in this case. So that's all I'm saying I, uh, is that it's time yeah. for me. It's time for me. I, I've just dug in and been like, okay, where's the guerrilla warfare for me as the CMO, CEO, CFO of the practice, right? Where can I do so, things that, 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 that retain money and amplify attention? Okay. Just, I want to sort of be captain obvious here, but have you also, made sure that the variable is solely related to the marketing. So if I, for those people out there that don't have any understanding, they've just persisted through the first 30 minutes of this podcast and they like, I don't even understand marketing. I don't care about marketing. I don't have a website, blah, 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 but they're kicking ass because okay. their patient experience and they're, they have such a vibe, they have such a good organization culturally and everything. What I'm, what I'm trying to say here is that, marketing you don't sometimes you don't need marketing if you're so special not just in dentistry but you're so special you don't even need anything like that restaurant in downtown right. manhattan that has a black door and you have to work to find it yeah so that's a fine location it though, it's so you're, what you mean you is know, marketing in the traditional sense right because everything is really marketing. because it is marketing so right so what i'm think what i'm just trying to drill down with you peter is that are you certain that nothing else has changed? Because good times make it easy to become lazy or not paying attention. So not only were you thinking I'm like the freaking Stephen Jobs of marketing, but were your doctors also feeling like, holy shit, 300 patients, 500 patients a month. Come on, man. You don't have to like, you know, either do the FMR or don't call me whenever. And now that it starts, People kind of like, you know, who moved my cheese here? Are they, is the whole organization feeling we are such badasses that we don't have to, you know, 300 yeah, patients so just changes you. It, so, yeah, I don't know if it's so much the experience. I think the experience stays consistent. I think what happens though, Greg, We'd like to like, think so as business owners, but, well, you know, I mean, I, it does, it changed you. How could it not change them? So if you're thinking I'm the master 350 new patients, don't you think Dr. Jones in the practice is like, oh man, come on. Oh, you, you're both right. Craig, you're the, you're speaking of the norm. Most people, it doesn't, they think it stays consistent and doesn't Pete, you audit it. So yours stays consistent because you have an accountability process put in. That's what I was trying to say. With but the majority of people I think is who Craig is talking about. And that is correct. They don't audit it. The, that goes on autopilot too and where, starts to where, drop as well. I, I guess to what the other point I was trying to make is the thing that, that we forget to do when times are great, right? When we're in a bull market, everyone knows what I'm saying when I say bull market, right? It's just like, wow, we were doing so well. Look at us. Look at the economy. Everything's doing well. You forget to do the small things. Call the patient in the evening. Yeah. Ask for referrals. Ask for reviews. And so that is the drum I've been beating recently. Not the, not the, not the injections. Cause gosh, we, we do that and we audit that, but like the simple low hanging fruit, we sometimes forget because all of our needs are being met by quote unquote, the marketing machine. And so you forget the things that, that got you there. And so, you know, I, I don't know. I, I don't have a point to make. Yeah. It's, I, I, I kind of look at like, it's like soft times make soft people. So like it, everything's been easy. <laughs> everybody gets a little, um, everybody gets a little used to it. You know, like the, you, the, your doctors are going to look at you like, hey, marketing guy, uh, do your thingy, whatever you, you know, your thingy that you do with the Google thing, you know, and you're yeah, like, yeah. hey, guys, hey. are you calling your patients? Well, no, I don't have time. You know, we're doing, you know, so it's 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 just interesting that you have to be holistic in your ownership of all areas of the practice. But what I would say is before flicking the switches of marketing on always when 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 the when tough times hit, get back to basics. Get, make sure that each person is leaving like, 
holy shit, was that just a debt? Like, that was crazy. I felt like I was with family. If you don't have that walking out every single day, you're going to be spending shit tons of money, disappointing more people. Like, pay attention to Google reviews. Some of them are douchebags. But some of them might actually be bringing up a good process. When people give you feedback, thank them. Ask, ask your friends that patronize your practice and say, hey, is there anything that you could suggest that we could do better? And say thank you and learn. Just because, you know, things are I changing. I mean, honestly, it's Craig, it's really what it, what it has forced me to do, too, is not just a marketing thing. And it's forced me like we had a we had our book club inside the Bulletproof Mastermind right recently. Right. We went over a book and the book clubs probably like sounds a little nerdy, but, but, but we all chose to like pick up. It was right after the Tupperware party. It was really fun, actually. <laughs> yeah. No fun. So fun. The yeah. By the way, Trey, the fruitcake Thanks. recipe you shared was to die for. Trey. Phenomenal, Phenomenal, wasn't it? Phenomenal. Thanks for bringing the white Zinfandel, Trey. <laughs> I know. The Bartle and James, I loved it. Uh, beautiful. Um, beautiful. All right. So we had, we had, we had a, you know, we picked a book called Traction by by uh, by we Peter. <laughs> what <laughs> I said no, by I, we. I did not. Here's the book we. No, you didn't. Rec- you didn't. Come on. <laughs> this is it what we're doing. You. This is what we're doing. But I politely uh, say we. Right. <laughs> no, you know I'm what? kidding. It was. It's a great book. Traction. Go ahead. I don't want to steal your thunder. Go ahead. Heaven forbid I actually do something and lean into the ecosystem. Yeah, you can go sit for it. Heaven forbid. It's you for caring. I mean, Craig, my coattails are getting so heavy. Can you can you jump off? All right, listen, don't make me drop another PBD DM on you. Um, <laughs> all right, so listen. So what it's forced me to do to it. So looking at that retrospect, you know, being being retrospective where your position, saying, gosh, I've been a little lazy, looking at all these things. And then going through the traction inside the traction by Gino, uh, what's it, what is his last name? Gino Wickman. Wickman. Thank you. You know, because I discovered this at one of the YPO seminars. Everyone was like, it's the greatest book ever. So I brought it to our mastermind. We kind of discussed it. And, and obviously we all read it and then came to a zoom room one night and started just chatting. And what was funny is we all came to the same conclusion and we were like, dude, this is really just the bulletproof pathway, but just condensed a lot more. And so what it reminded me of is like, sometimes we just forget the small basic stuff, right? The, the, the steps that you go, you forget the little things that, that are, that are accretive to the master new patients, if you want, or the master revenues, you forget all the things in the bull market. So I went back and revisited and I was like, how the pathway is so much better than even what traction is recommending for the entrepreneurial operating system. And so it was just, it was a nice, it was a nice, uh, confirmation for 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 the curriculum which, which we go through but also just like that we're we're beating the right drum and and if the if the best selling books if people who are in the YPO world are saying this is the greatest book ever then isn't that cool that we're kind of tracking the same way in a dental standpoint i guess was my thing but it reminded me to kind of look at it and be like oh yeah kind of like not so good in that referral department I'm probably not asking for as much as we should and you know and where's our where's our retention activating system how are we activating how are we i'm sorry uh, uh, inactive how are we activating new uh how are we activating inactive patients thank you reactive things like that reactive <laughs> yes. thank you i just wanted to see you struggle with that yeah. well i was going on a little work. monologue and you guys are flustering me because you both feel like i feel like you're both against me right now it's because uh, oh, no, we're just, we're just sure. watching. we love you yeah we love you um no it so, is true it is a good confirmation of um and I, what i like about I, I read it a long time ago but it it does point to the idea of at least what I gleaned from it was having accountable people to cover your weaknesses as well. You know, like having like, yeah. people that can backfill into your organization. You mean you're saying, uh, yeah. And that actually, you're right, Craig, that was pretty much the, the thesis of the book was having the right person on the right seat of your bus. Right. And that was, that was like 50%, that's 50% of the book and then holding them accountable to what they can, can do, so to speak. Right. But you are right. That, yeah. that was a big portion. I said, man, like, you know, when we talk about culture index, like that really has helped help confirm by data is the right person here. Right. So I think that book is great because it brings up the fact that it, it's a system. You need a system. All it does is define the system. And there are a million books that define systems The uh, what's that other four pillars book. That's another one that's similar. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. there's a million of them, they're operating systems and it, the, the better companies that continue to grow have an operating system. They have a, they have an outline, they have a bulletproof pathway. 
that they stick to and follow. Yeah. And when you have that system, whatever it may be, it's like a diet. What diet works? The one you use. All of yeah, them yeah, get yeah, you yeah. there. So don't worry about which one's better. Just pick one and go with it and you'll improve and you'll do great. And I think that's a huge positive that people get get lost on. And to, to apply that to the marketing aspect, we spend so much time talking about what marketing is and how Pete does mm -hmm. it or how Craig does it or how I do it, how Dwight does it. And they're all different, but they all work. And I think one of the big things that you have to focus on, especially as you have what seems to be coming down the pipe from an economy uh, standpoint, is you need to set metrics that you're trying to achieve. So we talk about, oh, we want to have a good this, <clears throat> good content creation, pay-per-click ads. This is what we're doing. But what's your goal? I mean, if your goal is, and, and I'll use ours as an example, I want 40 new patients per doc. And if I'm hitting it, mm -hmm. then I, if I stop hitting it or I see a decline, I'm pulling the, the easy button, the easy levers first. It's, are we calling the patients? Are we, you know, well, I'm going to, I'm going to audit the, the actual. If you stop hitting that, you're saying you go yeah. back and audit. So you are it. always dynamic in that sense. Yeah, yeah, but, okay. and the point I'm trying to make there is you need to have a metric you're shooting for, because if you're just randomly doing it and, and. Greg, you mentioned the Titanic, just keep going up forever. That's a good way to be a prob be problematic is set a goal and try to achieve it. And don't just go, we need more. More for right. the sake of more is not good. And marketing has an end game to it. And you need to define the end game and then you need to go get it. And then pull the easy button uh, or pull the easy levers you can pull first up to you know whatever else those could be hard. If you don't know how to use pay-per-click, don't do it first. That's do well something said. you know how to control first. That's well said, Trey. Very well said. All those things are really valid. And every single time I've met an amazing, iconic company, there's always an iconic founder somewhere. When I talk to that person or get to interact with that person, there's so many things that that person possesses, care, vision, clarity, focus, good attitude, good communicator, that like marketing is like the unintended side effect of having a great leader. And I think that there's a lot of, um, mm -hmm. in the consulting world, you know, I, I think in the consulting world, there's a lot of people that will give you and sell you the five easy steps to the marketing and you, you have to do it all. And the hardest thing is to be that leader first and foremost. So for those, cause I, and I get, I get a lot, you know, maybe it's just the way my brain works, but when I talk to somebody and they're talking about a very tactical question about marketing. When I start drilling it down, because I'm I'm asking them some active questions, I'm like, oh shit, they actually don't need as much marketing as they do clarity. Um, and they're just dis disguising it as a marketing question. You know, what where are you trying to go? Are you trying to hire so well, I don't really know. I'm not sure. Maybe I think that yeah, I could want to do that. I'm like, oh shit. So the three of us are in our own echo chamber with like laser focused vision of where we want to go. I know, I know exactly what would make Peter happy, what would make Trey, what would Dwight. We know exactly where we're going. But when we talk to the to the average dentist out there, they don't have that. We see that with our mastermind. We really do, and we're doing. You know, so I think that's you know not to say that the marketing is not important. It's paramount. It's paramount. But directionally, where you going is the most important thing. And I think that we don't think of that. We don't even think of us as business owners, by and large, the average dentist. You ever met those people who like, you ask them a question and they say, well, it dep everything is, it depends. It depends. Yeah. Depends on what? I don't know. Just yeah. if you're, no, I, I, I have, those, have those conversations. I think there's one on this call. I think there's one on this call. <laughs> well, it's, Cause it's not, it's not, I mean, it depends. It's like you didn't look at the human, you didn't look at their vision. You didn't look at their marketing. You didn't look at that. You didn't ask them if their pet shit on the carpet today, everything depends. Well, doesn't and, it? And it does. That's correct. Doesn't it? <laughs> In the end. Absolutely. It yeah, but it depends. For the sake of conversation, when you're sitting here trying to give well, no, I mean, tangible this is, takeaways for on a podcast. This is, is a nice tangible, somehow... this is a tangible takeaway. Got it. It's saying to those people that, you know, like I, I remember a conversation um, that we had right before stage uh, in Nashville on Summit. At Summit, we had that really renowned dental speaker who remained nameless. Don't fill in his or her name, please. And he says to me, you know, it's interesting. You talk about business being stressful. My business never stressed me out before a day in my life. I was like, bro, 
And I guess I just narrowed it down to sex now. I was like, you don't have a business. You're a dentist. That's what you do. Why would it stress you out? You worry that you're not going to be able to do the crown right after 23 years? Have 20 people doing crowns that you don't even get to talk to. That's a different level. It's a different magnitude. So it's like even the business consultant doesn't own a business. And I'm not thro throwing shade. I'm just saying don't speak to that. It's like saying the NBA doesn't stress me out. You've never played an NBA game. That would stress the hell out of us right now. So it's I, I think that we're just – we're – you know, we're not being real. And I think it's important to just figure out what do you want to do? What are you doing? And then market to what you want, not to say, well, Trey does that. So I should do that too. Cause well, you know what? To that, it's not to that effect, yes. you read biographies and you take things from people. You, you see people you admire, whether they be, you know, you read a book on you sure. know, Thomas Jefferson yeah. and you, you yeah. see these pieces of his life in that biography. It's you, you model yourself after. And to some extent, when you're sitting here with a microphone and, and you're answering a question, <clears throat> you do have to answer it exactly how you do it, because what you're doing is telling them this is what I do and it works for me. But then giving them the ability yeah, you're to not say, giving global you know advice. What? I like that, but I don't like that. It's I'm going to take this from Pete. I'm going to take this from Craig. I'm going to take this from Trey. So you're, you're kind of giving a little bit of a footprint of, of these are possible. Now you choose now to choose your own adventure, which were great books. But yeah. Yeah. I remember them well. They were fun. Um, that was, that's a good point, Trey. Yeah. I, I think we read and we educate ourselves to, so we can compare and contrast with how we would react in that situation, right? That's the stories we, that are, that we, that we listen to or the movies, or even the education, right? You compare and contrast with what's deficient in my life. What do I need to augment? Where do I need to, to adjust? Where I know, you know, and um, you know, that's why like reading is such a like. I was actually looking at Patrick B. David's. He just posted a new video on like the five books he's going to be reading this year, right, in twenty twenty three. And I was kind of shocked by them actually, because some were were stories. Like it's one was on an Onassis, right, the story of Jackie Onassis and the Kennedys and all that stuff. And, and I was like, yeah. oh, this is business. And then, but it, but he kind of explained how it was. So. Um, you know, YouTube is more like my, you know, I'm not a big novel reader. I think I'm more of a consumer of, of, of the how to's on YouTube. If you couldn't tell, right. I educate myself just by watching videos. Um, but it's really just to kind of, just to kind of apply to life. No different than reading, no different than reading. Right. Anyway, yeah, I almost think like each book changes you a little bit, you know, like you're, you're different after each book, like after each compelling book. Like, like, you know, listening to the autobiography or the biography of uh, Thomas Jefferson or whatever. You, no, know, you take, are, it, it, you take it one you. pearl from anything you do and you apply it to the rest of your life. Yeah. I mean, how, how what a compounding effect of, of knowledge. Well, think about the compounding thing. Did you see what I posted yesterday on the Mighty Networks about like something I stole from Jesse Itzler, which I thought was really cool. I never really repurposed stuff. But it was called, he put out a post the other, the other day, and it was it, the 100-hour rule, right? And so, Trey, back to your point of compounding. Basically, the 100-hour rule states that doing something for 100 hours in a given year, whatever it is, right? If I want to learn how to scuba dive or or play the violin or or sing or do dentistry or place implants, whatever it is, okay? 100 hours. Let's just put, put, a, put a pin in that, which would break down to 18 minutes a day. If you, at the end of the year, have put in 100 hours worth of work towards that craft, you are now going to be better than 95% of the world's population at doing X task. X skill. I shouldn't say task. X skill. And I was like, yeah, that, you know, 100 hours seems like, damn, that's a lot of time. 18 minutes a day? Man, that's pretty easy, you know? Yeah. And so back to your point of compounding is it is I thought that was a very interesting way of just breaking, the eating the elephant micro bites and at the end of the year looking back and saying damn i am now like so yeah. if you're a shitty marketer and you're like i i know i'm like i know nothing about google ads what you were saying guess what in 18 minutes a day you'd be a better marketer than 95 percent of people if you just watch youtube start digging in doing that right if you're a shitty business lead if you're a shitty leader right fix the things that you know you're bad at is where i'm going and you can do that in 18 minutes a day and now become superior not not inferior, but superior to ninety five percent of the population. And it also makes you happy too, because the progress. Yeah, because you're solving sure. problems, Craig. Like you said, yeah. isn't 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 happiness? You know, you, yep. you push on this. Happiness is so much on solving 
solving problems things and quality you want better quality problems yes yeah. that's the bet that that's the quest is having better quality problems to solve but we humans are most happiest when they are solving things um and that is hard honestly i i get so much great great happiness in being the answer guy as you all know trying to be that or at least at least fronting as that and i have a hard time just shutting my mouth and letting the answers come out in the room i have a hard time that's probably one of my one of my deficits in leadership is that i give the answer when I, yeah. you know what i think the answer is versus letting the collective come up with the answer because i want to speed 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 through let me just give you the answer because i know the answer and move on yeah and that it's is like the that book is multipliers a yeah, yeah that's a detriment um, it's funny those, those those ceos that are iconic like that like the lea cocas or you know whatever whatever the you know the the amazing ceos they're the ones that solve everybody else's problems but mm -hmm. statistically speaking, when they exit the organization, they leave everybody less than they a found vacuum. them. They, they leave a vacuum. <laughs> yeah. And Steve Jobs was even so, so, so much of a subtractor that upon his death, he like released like the next, I heard, and this may not be a true, this might be a wives tale, but I heard he's like, okay, guys, here's like the next three updates that you'll release after I die. Basically, you guys are so freaking stupid. Like, I'm gonna have to manage you from death. Well, it's it's funny you say that. Remember how I was just mentioning? Um, let me, let me, let me, did you guys hear that? Or did I, did I make no? That you're, you are, you are I right. love his deal of of how do you know <clears throat> how do you know they want that? And he said they don't they don't know what they want because I haven't told them what they want. Well, I mean, Henry that, Ford was saying that. About, yeah, you're talking Henry about. Ford Ego more the, than anything. That this was no, of, no. That's, but it that's also drives success. It drives Henry, success. Henry Ford said, "If I would have listened to the population, I would have built a faster horse." And to some extent, they are right. People don't know what they want until you give it to them. You see the need. No one knew that they needed a drive-through spicy chicken sandwich place. But you know, the this guy was the was like this. Is what we need, Craig. So you said like you gave this Steve Jobs example, and I'm, I'm throwing this back up on the screen because that was actually one of. Patrick Fitt David's recommendations was called after Steve. Now Apple became a trillion dollar company and lost its soul after jobs. Right. So, right. It, it, yeah. So it, that right. was, that was, that was one of the books. Oh. Right. But it's, it is one of the things that was the hardest lesson for me to learn. And the thing that I'm most grateful for learning it is to allow people the space to grow into and if you're the smartest person and you're, you get all the answers, you will actually make everyone around you really dumb. And you can, you can carve years off of your trajectory if you allow people to, to, to reach their own potential. You know, it's like that space between reaction and stimulus is the space for growth. Same thing in a business. Hey, I know, you know, they ask you something. It's so freaking easy for you to be like, it's A plus B and equals C. But if you say, right, what do you right. think? Or what, what, what would you do? Okay, that's okay. And then boom, then you can grow a business that you're free of. I mean, if we all, and it's like, again, depends. If you all want a business that you actually don't have to show up to. Did you just say it depends. And I'm saying that because it's, uh, it's tongue in cheek, but it's true. If, you're, mm. if your goal is to have a business that runs without you, do that. If you have a need either in your ego or something else to never be replaced and you tell people, I don't want to be there, but it's true that you really do want to be there, then don't, then answer everybody's questions for them. You know, just figure out what you really, really want. And I, I, uh, I had a very interesting conversation with an old friend from dental school and she was telling me how she had this associate and she just like completely, like she told me what happened as this guy's running late, she basically walked in the opportunity and be like, hey, do you need, I mean, it's probably nicer than this, but like, do you need me to like finish up your patients for you? Cause you're like running really late. Like basically like you're an F tard. And like the guy, like, he's just like, we should talk at the end of the day. I'm like, I know how this is gonna go. He quit, right? She's like, yeah, how'd you know? I'm like, cause you completely emasculated this guy in front of patients. You made him feel like an idiot. And now how I know, cause I used to do that. And she has to really, I'm like, what do you want? Do you really, really want a practice that runs without you? Because if, if that's the case, you can't treat people this way. You know, and there's all these rules about like how people should work and he's a sissy and he should man up. I'm like, oh, damn, that's how you really feel. You're going to have a lot of heartache in front of you. I don't know. Are you guys paying attention to me? Or are you guys tuning out right now? Did he wear jogger scrubs? It depends. He, I don't know. I don't. Probably, I never asked. Probably. I never asked. But I, I, I just think it's, I just think it's important 
to, you know, we all value a business that runs without us. And if you're going to want that, you have to adapt how you lead people. That's true. That's true. That's the Trey, biggest How busy act. are you between now and the end of the year? Uh, I mean, busy like normal. It's, it's probably the normal. answer. Okay. So yeah. no, like it's not hair on fire. We don't squeeze. We don't squeeze it in. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm terrible at that. You could do that. And we just don't. <clears throat> when you say busy, like you mean his practice or him personally? It's practice. Okay. It's practice. Is that, is that what you thought he meant? Yes, that's yeah, what I thought he that's meant. What he, that's okay. what he meant. That's what I thought he meant. I just have a weird brain, people. They hear different things. We, uh, we, we love you for that weird brain. It, de it depends. Weird, weird, weird brain. Weird what? Brain. So, what other books were on that list? Oh, <laughs> now you you want to you want to dig into my content? Oh, you know PBD. Can I have a moment of shameless promotion? Yeah, PBD promote. gave me a shout, that's a your shout favorite out. Thing to do. Let's be shameless. Well, I mean, dude, it was a real shout out. He's like this podcast he did, he sponsored did give you by a, a root canal. <laughs> yeah. You are right. Keep going. He did. He. Did. We need to fine. post that he, clip on um because it was good. Even though he mispronounced your name, which I hope you okay. doesn't matter. I don't care. That's karma. That's okay. karma. <laughs> I don't care. I'll pronounce. I'll pronounce his wrong next time I see him. Um, but, that was no. It was cool. He did talk. He actually two times, Craig. I believe it yeah. was two times, wasn't it? Well, what I was saying is, I love. He's got a guy in the show. And I'm like, I love when you argue with the guys because it's real. And I talked about on our podcast how. You know, we go back and forth and we disagree. You're like, that's the way it's supposed to be. That's that's journalism. That's what people want to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he said, you, and were you being were you being honest with that? You like him arguing with that guy named? <coughs> yeah, because Adam? he I don't know the guy's name, but he's like Adam. This guy, what what's his name? Adam. He's the like the little bit of social mm -hmm. left leaning guy. Yep. He said he asked a question of PBD, and PBD is like, "Well, answer your question." He's like, "Well, I, I don't." He's like, "How can you ask a question that you're not willing to answer yourself? You have to be able to answer the question." And they're going back and forth. He's like, "You're not answering the question." I just loved it. I love holding people's feet to the fire. Yep. Yeah. Because as you say, words, you're you're a stickler on words. Well, I just you know I just think that there's uh, that's where the that's where the real content is happening. Like you know we are about to get there with with uh, your boy Chris Ramsey. Um, and I was, but we we're gonna get there. And you're like, dude, no, 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 we can't go here. You don't remember that with the rim? No, I, I don't do. remember what it was about. I don't remember what it was about. Of course, I remember. Yeah, when I, when I told him I could double his practice. Yeah, I was being kind to. Uh, I was too, because if you doubled my business, it's, it's would... like my three year old. Kind is cool. You got to remember, well, Craig. Kind is cool. Well, were you being kind when you told me to buy Bitcoin at 2500 or cool? Or taunting me and sending me texts like "You go, come on, man up." <laughs> I think it was pretty kind because I. I mean, you made in, hindsight, me in hindsight, it was it was it was very kind. It was very right, benevolent. So it could have been that. you could have been blaming me if it had gone the other way, right? Yeah, it depends. Kind of All right, so Trey, you asked the question: What were the five books? Here they are: How the Mighty Fall, <coughs> um, and that is by <clears throat> Jim Collins. And it says how the mighty fall and why some companies never give in by Jim Collins. Okay. So, so, so his books were in the context of is winter is coming kind of thing. It's going to be, if it's a hard year, how do you prepare? So that's number one, how the mighty fall. Number two was the one I just told you guys about is after Steve, how, uh, how Apple dealt with the, the death of, of Division, Steve Jobs right? and lost its soul in the process. It became super profitable. But then how like how Tim Cook kind of took over and changed the direction. Number three was how to invest by uh, David Rubenstein. I think he interviews a bunch of uh, investment firms and just kind of some like <coughs> colossal, some of the biggest names in finance. And, and um, so that was one. So, and then, sorry, I'm losing my screen here. It's tough to, tough to do all this and be moderated. The next one was Atlas Shrugged, the classic Atlas Shrugged, Very which classic. is a sixty-two hour audible book, mm. by the way. Wow. You, you gotta read that. I have never I everyone has said that and I just I never read it. You haven't either? Well, you haven't? No. Oh man, I've read that three or four times. That's no a, way. But you can't do that in audiobook. That's too much. Okay. All right. But that's a that's a phenomenal book. I've heard well, that. Well, isn't about, it easier in Audible? No. He said you'll lose, can't you'll lose it. track of it. Is that the um, Galt, Jim Galt, or whatever his name is? Um, Who Galt. is John Galt? John Galt, yeah. Who is John Galt for 400? <laughs> um, I caught that little Jeopardy. 
What? What? Well, give me the cliff notes. What's it and, about? And then hold on, let me let me finish. Then you go back to this. And then the last one was Onassis, like I told you, and that's um, that's the story of it's called Onassis: An Extravagant Life by Frank Brady, and uh, those are the books he's reading. All right, so go yeah, go to uh, Atlas Shrugged. What is Atlas that? Atlas Shrugged. What was that, Trey? Uh, so it's Anne Rand, mm-hmm. which uh, the two books you got to read by Atlas Shrugged are Anne Rand and Fountainhead. <laughs> you need yep. to read Atlas Shrugged first, and it is there's just a lot of good lessons that will reside in it. Even from, I mean, to some extent, from a business aspect of it too, but go and it's a very it's old too, book, right, Trey? It, it very, and it's too long. It's way too long to go. And I, you know, I mean, if you're an audible person, go for it. But it's a, it is definitely a book that has a lot of ins and outs to it. A lot of people. There's a lot of good character development. There's a lot of great story to it, and there's a lot of good lessons. Read the book. I think you will get more out of it. Fountainhead's cool. It's a little bit, it's, it's different. It has a little bit, Craig, you would actually like that. There's a lot of, there's a lot of architecture stuff in there. Um, but those two, I would say are, are just great books to read just from the standpoint of it, even of just a good story. If you just ignore all the rest of it. That's good. All right, guys, it, we're right at an hour. I think I'm, uh, I think I've reached my cap with you guys today. <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough. One, other, one hour, whether you need it or not. Trey, 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 what do you got going on for holidays, buddy? I want to ask you real quick. Just sending me some. Uh, some Man, I'm having. Some I'm having a little girl. Yeah. Oh, well, that's right. When's the due date? The 28th. Wow. So that's awesome. I got a. I got quite the Christmas present coming. Wow. Yeah, you do. So, to, so if you were asking personally, are you busier? My answer is not yet, but I'm about. Yeah, you to will be. be. Yeah, you will be. Peter, are you traveling at all for the holidays? Just a just a Mississippi, yeah. Philadelphia, you know, Craig. I actually I actually made the mistake. I actually booked travel for next Christmas and next Thanksgiving because I regretted. You know, travel you almost have to look at kind of a year in advance. I think when you're doing, <clears throat> and so I was like, you know, this would have been a great time to take a nice little vacation with my my family. Sometimes we, you know, when they get out of school, they start looking around like. And you become, you know, in my house, I be, I am the playmate for some reason. Like, when oh, I was yeah. going, and so they look at me like, Dad, what are, we, what are we doing today? I'm like, well, I'm working. I don't know about what y'all are doing, but like, and then they guilt me into like, well, can you come home at like one, two, or this? can we go this? And so anyway, it's, I think holidays and summers get stressful for me because my kids look at me as the playmate. So funny enough, I actually, every, in the beginning of the uh, school year, I block off my work calendar for every day that my kids are off from school. You do? So no school, no work. Very That's cool. Good. That's, that is very, yeah. That's a good place to be, Craig. Good for you. And then do you yeah. plan something at that day? or? Um, yeah, I mean, more or less. You know, today was, you know, I, I woke up, I was, I was at the ranch today and I came down for this and I have, I'm working tomorrow. But by and large, like when there's a teacher planning day or MLK or a little bit odds and ends i block off you're hanging out with them i'm hanging or we're going away awesome. or doing something fun yeah very cool that's awesome that's a good place to yeah. be man. Good for yeah. You. yeah i mean it's uh as a buddy of mine said i will emily I, bolden or I, emily oh, let's, let's <laughs> talk to her speaking of philadelphia mississippi yeah i don't want to do that god dang it this thing i do have a, a little thing to end this with this um my buddy john will always say, say to me and i love this quote he says he says, I'll stand on what I've done over the last 25 years, but not necessarily on what I've done today. And it's like you, the three of us have worked our tails off, you know, literally tails off to get to, to build things into the position that we are today. So it's not like we woke up and I was doing this. I'm 51 right. years old. I'm and doing this like lucky. the last three years. You got lucky. So well, I did. So I did. Lucky. I did as well. I did get lucky, you know, but right. fortune favors the bold. And uh, if you go out. And take risks you tend to get luckier and you you learn a lot you tend to get luckier Agreed. and with that i agree we should uh end i think that's a good wrap what are you guys doing and i think just a quick quick thing what are you doing in preparation for i think you know i look at the the <laughs> end of a year and the beginning of a new as like new goals new thing are you doing anything different is there anything kind of like i'm not saying what are your goals i'm saying 
are you do you, do you use the end of the year as some sort of waypoint for you guys i do like where it's like i okay. personally do yes i, I use do it as a, as a <clears throat> I, I reflect back craig i spend a lot of time making goals in the beginning of the year and then i use the end of the year to reflect back on like my success ratio like what what how did i do kind of yeah i do the same thing i write a i write a i'd call it a vision but it it's, it's almost like white paper of the year but it's where i where i have what i have accomplished this year and then where I will go next year. And I write it in November of every year. That's cool. Yeah. So it's almost like, is it like a letter to yourself? Yes. And funny enough, I, many times I don't refer to it till the summer of the next year. Yeah. And I used to send it to myself and my wife once got it. I thought it was a suicide note. No I way. tell you that story. <laughs> so I wrote a letter. Um, we used to do this every year and I'd send it on December 30th. And I was out of town. I was like, dear Craig, you know, blah, blah, blah. And she freaked out. You know, I mean, she thought it was like a suicide note. You blowed up your phone because of the yeah. She was blowing me up. I'm like, yeah, it was kind of crazy. Yeah. But it was like it was written in the first person. Like, I'm really proud that you did this and you did that. We did this, and she started getting into it. She's like, holy shit! She called me immediately. Like, she was like, Craig, what thing. is this nonsense you've written? So she opened no. your mail, read your letter. <clears throat> well, it was it was addressed to me from me. So it was Craig to from Craig to Craig. It was like, you know, we just did that for the entire office. Like yeah, what would be gotcha. cool if I'm December, like, look, so it was in the first of the year, what did you accomplish over this last year and, and writing it while you were proud and what you were able to do, but she Very freaked cool. out. Yeah. <laughs> a, little, a little drama, December yeah. 31st drama. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, it is unfortunate. The holidays are a time when people uh, do take those types of, uh, they start going in those directions. I had a personal thing, like a person that just uh, attempted suicide. And my one of my good friends is uh, niece just did. It. It's like crazy right now. I mean, I, what is it about this time of year that causes that? Is there, you know, but it is, it does feel like that's when this seems to happen. Holidays. Yeah. What yeah, is that you about? Know, you know, it's celebration uh, of friends the, and family. And if you feel the three only. top days for a heart attack are, uh, New Year's Day, Christmas Day, and I think the day before New Year's, or maybe it's Christmas. Wow. Yeah, and 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 science has tried to blame it on well, it's cold weather and there's constriction in uh, you know vessels that causes tension and you know blah 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 blah. But it's it's not. It's this time. It's your year. spouse. It's <laughs> <laughs> no. no all, so, the, the spouse is all the other days. Those three yeah, days exactly. are different. Right, right, right. Uh, what, what do they say? Uh, happiness is a warm, caring, close-knit family that lives in another city. So when they all come <laughs> to your house, it can get a little stressful. But on a, on a serious note, um, you're not alone. This is all We all deal with stuff like this. Reach out to your friends and family. Absolutely. Always reach out. Always reach out. There's someone that cares to talk about stuff like this. If anybody, I do. So reach out to me. I'm, I'm a voice for that. Or I'm, a, I'm an ear for that. Sorry to end on such a mor morbid note, but um, no, know. I think I think that's a good place to be, right? Like if you know someone who's in, you know, like the holidays are the time to kind of check in on people for sure. I think that's yeah. I think that's going to take your morbidity, good reminder, pull it up yeah. a notch, right? Yeah, and thank the, you. Think about others who are not as as fortunate. Good reminder, take <laughs> care of others, absolutely. Yeah. Of others. Um, yeah, exactly. And it's a good and it's a good excuse to rekindle things, right? Whether it's whether it's families that have gotten sideways with each other because of politics or COVID or Thanksgiving, whatever discussions, it's a good time to rekindle things. And yeah, and, it is. A, it is widely understood as a new beginning. So this yeah. is a great opportunity. You get and a new, same with friends. A new, that, that new year by the wayside. You know, so it's nice. It's a it's a good excuse to check in with people and just say, hey, man, I was just thinking about. I actually got one today from someone I hadn't talked to in a while, and it was nice. It was like, hey, man, I'm I'm, I'm just thinking of you today, and I just wanted to reach out and say hi. That was it. Yeah, that was I meant to, cool. by the way, when I wrote it. I, I meant to. I was, I was. <laughs> uh, <laughs> boy, but it, it is, it, I like what you said, and there's always something to be thankful for. And um, I think one of the roots, one of the ways to get yourself out of trouble is to actually spend time thinking about other people. And with the new year coming and the holidays, what a great excuse, what a great time to just be like, hey, it's New Year's. It doesn't have to be, but it's a great softener. To be like, hey, with this coming New Year, you know, I'm hoping that we can spend more time or we can deliver blah, 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 or, you know, new beginnings. It's uh, yeah. what, a, what a great opportunity to look at it that way. There you go, Craig. See, you took your morbid thought and we turned it into a, we shine that penny. Turn that frown upside mm -hmm. down. Beautiful. All right, guys, if I don't talk to you before now and Christmas, 